Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. Uh, as some of you already know, we've just recently added a new tractor to our fleet. It's a Kubota L4701. Has the uh, front end loader, the pallet forks are on it right now, but the bucket is right there. But we also purchased the BH92 backhoe attachment for it. And we elected to assemble that ourselves. Figure we're rebuilding, fabricating, restoring old stuff all the time. So how difficult can it be? Put something together that's brand new right has to be easy besides we've got all the necessary manuals to tell us what to do so that's not such a big deal uh, this is pretty much how it shows up in a giant crate it is most of the way assembled already the uh, main platform and control panel has the boom already attached the stick is loose over there as are the stabilizer pads down there so that shouldn't take too much to get that stuff put together. And I, I should also mention that the Kubota dealer did want to install the backhoe subframe kit for us. That's what this orange bracket is and this one on the other side. The backhoe will hook in down here and then pin in here and here. And they also plumbed in the hydraulic circuit that we need from the tractor to power the backhoe function. That's one thing the dealer likes to do. So we did let them go ahead and do that. Those subframe brackets are pretty stout. They extend all the way up here and tie in with the loader frame, so that adds some rigidity to the chassis. And the other components we have include the QA quick attach coupler that's going to go on the end of the stick. We have the uh, quick attach bucket and also the hydraulic thumb attachment that is um, made to work with the. QA uh, bucket and coupler. In this pail here, we have the related hardware, valving, hoses, and instruction kit for plumbing in that entire hydraulic thumb. We're going to have to take a little bit of the control panel apart, add an extra spool in there, run some extra lines and what have you, but uh, we'll get all that done here in this video. So, But first things first, I need to get this out of the crate. One thing that they do is use like this um, automotive seatbelt webbing is what it looks like to secure a lot of these parts to the crate. And I found it's just as easy to cut right through that stuff because the staples they have uh, attaching it to the wood are, are in there pretty good. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is get the stabilizer pads put onto the arms, and of course I've pre-greased the pins. That's going to go without saying from this point on. Always good to get, get some grease on them to start with, so you're not just relying on the grease gun to push it into all the places it needs to be. Okay, so to catch up on what I'm doing right now, you can see I've repositioned the tractor to right up next to the backhoe, and I've also connected the hydraulic lines. Um, originally, my thoughts were to plumb in all of the circuits for the hydraulic thumb before I went and introduced any fluid into the system, thinking I was going to save uh, some mess that way. Well, when I um, swung that boom out by hand, I quickly realized this already has a partial charge of fluid in it. Um, when I actually swung that out manually, I was expecting to feel maybe some cush, like compressing some air in those cylinders, but rather it's like I came up against a hard stop until I took a bungee cord and actually threw that lever back so I could bypass the fluid uh, through the cylinder, and then I was able to pivot it around. So considering it already has fluid in the system, I wouldn't be saving anything by trying to plumb the thumb in right now before the rest of it's assembled. So I've come to the conclusion that in order to get the stick put on the boom, it's gonna be easiest if I get it off the pallet and off the ground and just positioned onto the tractor. And uh, I'm pretty sure I can pull this off. Granted, we have the lines, the hydraulic lines that go out to the stick are capped off, but it shouldn't uh, hurt any if I just leave those circuits alone and only throw the levers that have to do with the stabilizers and the boom. This thing's made to lift itself up and position itself onto the tractor brackets anyway. 
Don't see why it wouldn't work here. Now I've got the mainframe on the tractor, I can now put the stick onto the end of the boom. Um, they're held together by this main pin. This pin has uh, two steel spacers on it. Those spacers are going to go between the pin boss on the stick and the pin boss on the boom on each side. Um, pin is held in by this lock bolt. We'll go in over here. And you can expect this pin to be a rather tight fit. Uh, it is a tight fit just in the boom, and it is rather snug inside the bushing, but that's uh, actually a good thing. We don't want that pin wallowing around in the boom here. We want all of the pivoting action to be happening on the bushing, and of course you're going to want to grease all of this stuff really well before you try putting it together. So with everything lined up, we'll start the pin in, greased of course. And don't forget the spacer, also with a little coating of grease. Now that the pin is far enough through, I'll be sure to get the spacer put in on the other side. Greased as well, of course. Now that the pin is fully in and the holes are lined up, I'll just uh, install the lock bolt and nut. These are nylock nuts, so they will hold their position pretty well. And the manual is very specific about saying not to tighten the jam nut all the way up so that there is absolutely no tension on the bolt. You want to have a little bit of a vertical up and down free play there and not have that bound too tight. That's actually about right. Now we need to pin on the upper cylinder and uh, I'm going to have the engine running for this in case I need to make some minute adjustments to make everything line up. Same routine as down here, pin with a lock bolt, except we do not have the spacers that we need to worry about that was down there. We could just pin this one. Just need to get all the holes aligned with this pinch bar. See if the lock bolt will drop in. A little bit more. Perfect. And now to connect the hydraulic hoses for the bucket cylinder, you want to make sure to route your hoses down below where the uh, cylinder attaches at the top of the stick. Bring them forward to here. And in case there's any confusion as to what goes where, they've made this pretty simple. You can see there's some red tape on the crimped portion of the sleeve right there. Corresponding red tape on the crimped portion there. And this one we have red tape back on the hose. And this one, it's hard to see right now, but there's red tape down on the hose there. So that kind of codes where those need to go. So they've got everything capped off and pretty well protected. It's just a matter of taking the caps off and tightening the lines.
Okay, so after uh, briefly sweeping it through its range of motion, uh, just enough to work a little bit of air out and check for leaks. I've got the boom positioned up and to be safe, I've got the boom lock on so it can't fall down. I put the stabilizers down as well. Uh, since I'm gonna be working out here, you always want to be uh, conscious of anything that's uh, overhead or could drop that could hurt you. So that's why we've kind of got it locked down. Um, it's time to put on the QA coupler and the thumb. They both kind of have to go on at the same time because they both work with one another. So we'll start with the coupler, put the center pin through the link here. Just get it all lined up. This pin isn't gonna be nearly as tight as the cylinder pins were. Just gonna make sure to line up the hole. That's good. Next thing I'm gonna do now is remove the old factory pin on bucket pin. We're not gonna use this because uh, the thumb and the QA knuckle both take a longer pin, but we are gonna use this kind of as a tool. It's uh, basically gonna be a slave pin now. I'm just gonna slide it in to hold this uh, stationary. So now with the coupler being held stationary by our temporary uh, slave pin here, I can put this big roll pin through to secure this uh, this first yoke pin that we put in. Uh, this does not use a lock bolt in the nut because of uh, clearance requirements here. So basically you just drive that in. Go just till it flushes out on each end. Like that. Okay, now we're going to take this... Uh, temporary slave pin back out, pivot that down just enough to uh, preload these two hardened washers on each side of the boom right here. Uh, these are very important to have in there for a uh, wearing surface. And of course we'll get some grease on these things, uh, get them up in here and then start everything with the slave pin again, have it all already in position so that when we put that heavy thumb on we're not trying to manipulate all these small pieces in at the same time. Okay, so now that we have our slave pin holding everything together, the thrust washers are in there. Uh, we'll just take the main pin of this uh, thumb and just drift our slave pin right out the other side and let it fall on the ground. That should keep everything aligned as we feed the main pin through for this heavy thumb. It's going to be tough enough uh, manipulating this in by hand as it is without having to keep track of all that other stuff. So we'll try and make that old pin work for us. Actually, we didn't let it fall on the ground. Now, the thumb pin is retained by the same bolt and lock nut that we've used on the other pins. And now to insert the pin through the bottom portion of the cylinder, attaching it to the thumb. Okay, so to finish up the installation on the thumb cylinder, I want to get the hydraulic hoses attached to these brackets that hold them to the side of the stick. Um, this is a pipe thread fitting right here into there, so it's gonna need some uh, Teflon tape to seal that. But since, uh, since this is not a swivel fitting, I have to take the line off of each cylinder since they were just loosely installed for shipping. We'll get these put together in the vise. Teflon tape applied to the threads. We'll just uh, run it in, tighten it down. So now I can just attach the bracket to the stick with the two bolts, one there, one here, and then reinstall the line onto the cylinder. So after performing all those same steps to the hose that's on the other side of the stick, we continue on with our plumbing. We now need to install the line that goes from the stick and down to the boom. And the first step to doing that is to install this bracket on each side of the boom. There's a corresponding set of open holes on the other side. So we'll get both of these mounted up next. Now I can put the next hydraulic hose on. You want to pass this down through that ring terminal and attach this end right here. 
And once again, I'm going to do all these same steps on the other side. So just keep that in mind. Make sure to route the hose up and around that boss and then connect this end to this bracket. So for the final few steps here, I've put the boom down to the ground. It's going to be easier to route the final two hoses from the blocks through the boom all the way up to the control panel. Um, that's just going to make it easier. There's not going to be as many uh, sharp bends to push these around. So basically you start feeding the hose in with this uh, angled fitting heading down first. You're going to want this angle fitting with the blue cap to end up at your con control panel. And then the straight fitting on the other end with the red cap is going to attach right here. And again, we're doing this to both sides. So we'll just follow the rest of the hoses down where they enter the boom and just feed it slowly, making sure not to hang it on anything. And bring it out the bottom following the bundle of the other hoses. Route it forward and then shoot it through this little bracket, which is going to keep it contained around the swing mechanism. And we can end up with it deadheaded right here. That's as far as we're going to go until we get the uh, additional spool valve installed in that panel. And with it routed up to the control panel, we can finish the hose installation by securing them to these blocks on each side of the boom. Okay, everybody, we're coming down to the home stretch here, I promise. I've got all of the hydraulic lines for the thumb cylinder routed up to the control panel. Now we have to access the valve bank. I'll start with taking this front panel off. There's two bolts here and here I've already got off and another two on top, which are ready to come out. Next thing you do is take these little boots that are on the control levers and just push them down in. Just like that. Now this panel will lift off as long as you manipulate the control levers accordingly. So now I'm going to uh, disconnect the valve bank from the console and there's four bolts on the front. I've already got two of them out. We got these two on the bottom left to take out and then that'll be loose. And now we unclip both of the stabilizer levers, and then there are six bolts that hold the um, tower to the base. I'm also going to remove this tower and get it right out of the way. That's kind of an optional thing. Uh, the manual does not state to do that, but I'm just going to do this to make my life easier and just open this whole thing up. So we'll get this uh, tower off next. Okay, so we're ready to put the additional spool valve in here for the hydraulic thumb. I have this inlet plate disconnected from the backing right here, and you want to make sure you have all of your pressure out of the circuits. And I've also disconnected the lines from the tractor, so we have this completely isolated. And the first thing you're going to want to do is pull out these old tie bolts one by one and replace them with the new longer ones that are capable of sustaining that extra valve. Okay, we have one final tie bolt to go, and then uh, we'll be ready to take the end cap off and put that extra spool in. Lots of rags positioned around in case there's some mess. Yeah, we got some oil running down there already. There you go. I'll push these tie bolts toward you a little bit. There we go. Now the additional spool valve goes on, orient the O-ring the correct way, end cap goes back on next, and 
feed the tie bolts back through and secure with the old nuts. Now that we have the tie bolts properly torqued, the valve bank is back together. You take the line that goes down the left hand side of the boom and stick and attach it to the lower port. And once your lower line is tight, take the hose that goes down the right side of the boom and stick and attach that to the upper port. All right, and at this point we can start assembling the linkage that uh, goes to the foot pedal that controls this auxiliary valve for the thumb. So we start out with this little angle bracket and uh, um, shaft and it just bolts right to the bottom of that uh, control that's on the bottom of the spool valve. Now the console panel goes back on. And at this time I can bolt in the foot pedal control bracket for the thumb. Next, the foot pedal shaft can be inserted. Make sure you grease that. And as you slide it in, engage it with that angle bracket that is on the lower end of the linkage that we attached to the spool valve up here earlier. Once the shaft is aligned in that bracket, this roll pin right here off the end of the screwdriver can be driven down through all of those, securing the assembly. And I drove that roll pin in off camera. Sorry to say guys, but it was just way too tight of working conditions in here to be able to uh, video any of that. But it is kind of tight, but it is possible to be done. Okay, now the last piece to go on is the foot pedal. The hole in this uh, square goes right on the end of that shaft. You can fold it up, you can pin it right here when it's not in use. And the entire pedal is held on by a single cotter pin. Okay, and now before we put the panel cover back on, we want to uh, test this system out, check for any leaks. Definitely don't want to close that off until we know it's all good. So we'll just raise it up. Now we'll manipulate this foot pedal and see what happens at the thumb. So far it's all working. So now that I've completed the function check and I've verified no leaks, I've got the uh, panel cover back on. That was just these four bolts. Didn't think I needed to show you exactly how that went on. It's pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just pulling these, uh, these little control lever boots back up and getting those seated where they need to be. And then uh, once I finish this, the reassembly of this portion should be complete. All right, at last, we can finally hook up the quick attach bucket to the coupler. go that's the full rundown of assembling and installing the BH92 with the optional hydraulic thumb onto the L4701 tractor. A um, couple things to note right now um, from adding the thumb and then purging the air from all the hydraulic circuits on the backhoe I did have to top up the fluid level in the uh, transmission slash hydraulic system 
This is the uh, HST uh, hydrostatic drive, so it was that super UDT2 fluid. And this one took just about a gallon to get it back up to the top of the crosshatch on the dipstick after I had filled the entire hydraulic system for the backhoe. So that's one thing to keep in mind. And another thing I did was uh, relocate the entire seat and pedestal back to the rearmost uh, sets of holes. Now they tell you that on these uh, L4701s that you cannot do that because of uh, clearance issues. Well, my main clearance issue was this cross brace that goes between the fenders. All I did with this was I just took and flipped it backwards, basically upside down from how it was installed. This uh, angle that goes across was on the leading edges of those uh, brackets, but I just flipped it around. It still does not interfere with the uh, main operator seat, and it gave me plenty of room back here to relocate the backhoe seat to those rearmost holes. So that ended up being a pretty simple modification. And with me being 6'2", 6'3", with boots on, that extra two inches of uh, rearward uh, room with that seat really did make a big difference uh, on the platform here, especially operating that foot control for the hydraulic foam. So I hope you found this video to be helpful, uh, especially if you're thinking about getting one of these backhoes and uh, possibly considering uh, putting it together yourself, installing it yourself, what have you. At least uh, that should be a pretty good rundown of all the steps that are involved. Um, and maybe it helped you to make the decision that you just want to have the dealer do it anyway. Um, save you all the hassle, that's certainly an option too. But anyway, thanks for viewing everybody. If you have any comments, questions, leave them down below. Hope to see you back again.